What's up guys, so today we got a question from James who recently had his very first Jiu Jitsu competition. He won, and uh, but he had a problem. And that's why he's sending me the message because he had an issue with the competition, not because he won. <laughs> and he says in one of his matches, the guy that he had uh, an armbar on, right? He had this armbar on this guy, super tight, it, his arms crackling, right? So he's pulling and the arms going, that's the crackling. And uh, he says that he ends up letting go of the armbar because he didn't want to break it. He didn't want to break the dude's arm, so he lets go of it. And it made the match much closer. He said that because of that, the guy was able to come up on top. And at the end of the match, they both had equal points, right? And the ref was forced to make a decision. If you're not familiar with the way this works, in a jiu-jitsu tournament, if both people have the same amount of points, the ref might stand back and say, okay, I think this guy did enough, I raise his hand, right? And that's a ref's decision. So it's like down to the wire. And he was like saying, man, the match didn't have to go that close because I had this dude finish and I could have broken it. And so he's curious to me. He says, Chewy, did I do the right thing? You know, should I let go or should I have broken it? Should I have just like snap that arm and taken it home with me? Or, you know, should I let go? What do you think? And he's wondering what I would do in the situation. So, brother, thank you for the question. Here's what I think about people that don't tap. It, it, it bugs me both in the gym and in, in competitions. There is one exception to that rule, um, which I'll talk about later. But people that don't tap, to me it's like playing a game of chess and they're not playing correctly, right? So for instance, like if you and I were playing chess, James, we have our chess board set up, we like to compare jiu-jitsu to chess, right? And we start moving pieces around, right? Well, let's say that I put, I, I put checkmate on you. So I checkmate you, the game is over. But then you keep moving your king around. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? Like, you're, I just beat you. That's the rules of the game. To me, you know, when you get someone's arm fully extended and it starts crackling, you know, that's kind of the end. I've, I have you, I could break your arm over top, like end of, the, end of the game, right? We're done here. But when people don't tap, there's a problem because most people don't wanna break the arm, especially early on, right? At, at a higher level, which I'll talk about in a minute, we'll get to that, they have no qualms with it. But at the lower levels, you don't wanna break someone's arm, especially someone like you. You're just getting exposed to the intensity and the mentality of competing, right? And it's a different thing, it's a different animal. It's, you know, the same stuff as rolling in the gym, but it's a different mentality, right? Like inside the gym, when you're rolling with your training partners, you don't wanna break anyone's arm. You don't wanna pop anyone's arm because one, your training partners, if you keep breaking them, you won't have any. <laughs> I, heard it said, I heard it said once, if you break all your toys, you got nothing to play with. But just as importantly is, we have empathy for each other when we're training, right? Because when we're training, we're trying to push it to the max, right? We're trying to really push it to the limit to get better and improve. But we always have it in the back of our mind that I'm trying to take care of this person too because every one of us in jiu-jitsu either has been injured or you will be injured at some point and it's not fun. It's not fun to sit on the shelf and not be able to do this thing that you love doing and you wouldn't wanna to have to do that to someone else. You don't wanna hurt anybody else where they can't train. So you're always careful. I know in the gym, like if I get an arm bar fully locked out, I stop before I ever get to that breaking point. You know, I'll get, when it gets really tight and I'll stop there and I'll have complete control. I've even had guys in like leg locks or something where maybe their knee pops, but it's not a bad pop. <laughs> there was one time just recently the other day I was rolling and I had a guy in a hill hook and his like knee made a little pop and I could feel it. I instantly let go. You know, I was like, oh, <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, you okay, dude? He said, yeah, you know, it was, it was a good pop. I was like, oh, okay. You know, so we keep moving. Now again, I don't want to hurt them. My, my training partners, my brothers, I don't want to hurt them. But the problem is, is when you take that mentality over to competing, it doesn't always translate because there's, there will be people that don't want to tap. They're just like, no, I'm not tapping. I've got to win this, this, this white belt tournament that is this, for this regional white belt tournament that means nothing to anybody else but me. I'm gonna let my arm break. And by the way, if you're younger in jiu-jitsu, don't, let, don't do that. Don't let your arm get busted up because it seems like it's not a big deal now, but the problem is, is that that stuff stays with you. So yeah, maybe your arm pops and maybe you don't feel it for, you feel it for a few weeks and it gets better. But if you keep doing that, I have friends that I knew that trained like that where they let their arms pop all the time and then later on they literally could not fully extend their arm. They had to get surgery to remove bone spurs and stuff. So again, be smart with your body. You only get one of them. And so again, with your situation, if I was there, in that situation, I would have taken it. I would have broken it, and I would have kept going. Now, I don't want to, and I've never had to break an arm in competition, but I would have continued to apply pressure slowly. For me, like when I do submissions, even in competitions, I always try to do it this way. We'll use the Kimura for example. One of the most dangerous submissions in the book. 
You're attacking the most mobile joint in the body. No other part of our body moves with the articulation of the shoulder, right? This thing, if you injure it, it's never quite the same. And so I try to be as safe as I can with my competitors that I go against in competition, right? When I get a Kimura, I will break the grip, pull it around, and I'll slowly extend it. We're getting to that point where I give them a second to tap, right? Because I don't want to take it past that point. I will if I have to, but I want to give them an adequate time to, to uh, submit to it. I even got a compliment from one of the guys I competed against last year where he's a smaller guy. I went against him in the open, put him in a Kimura, and I, same thing, pulled it out, got it behind his back, and then started slowly you know, cranking it, and he tapped out, and he said, hey, man, I just want to say thank you for not like tearing my arm off, right? But again, even though I will take it to that point, I still have empathy for my, my fellow competitors. I don't want to hurt them, just like, you know, I, I don't want to have to sit them on the shelf either. So going back to your thing, if I was in that situation, brother, I would have kept going, and I would have not just... I wouldn't have taken it, just busted it over my, my hip. I would have just kept going and pulled that arm over top of my hip joint and just kept applying pressure until the guy hopefully tapped, you know, at a certain point or just kept going. You know, I just would have kept doing it because to me it's like it's their job to tap. You're an adult, you're in the adult division, it's your job to tap, be a, be a big boy, just take your arm there, slap the person's leg, let them know it's over. Now, the exception to this rule that I was talking about would be if you were a high level competitor, like ADCC competitor, and you've got everything on the line and you decide to make that decision to let your arm get busted up um, in, the, in the midst of trying to escape, that's your own decision, right? And at that point, maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a, a reasonable case you can make to make that decision. But for the guys that are on their up, they're coming up, I, I just don't think it's smart, especially for the younger guys and even the older guys, you know, because Anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. I think I've made my point. So, brother, hopefully that helps you. I would have taken it. I would have kept going. Um, but again, I understand why you haven't. And again, you're just getting used to this stuff. But again, this is another reason why it's really important to train your submissions with a lot of tightness and being very controlled with them so you can have that time to apply pressure slowly. And one thing that just popped in my head that maybe have helped you is if you're ever in that situation too where you're training, I know you're newer now, but as you get better, apply your submissions on the less experienced people and then give them some space and let them escape. And then see where you can chain the moves next uh, to with next, right? So let's say if you had that arm bar, put that arm bar on someone else, let them escape, and then see what you can do to counter their, ne their escape, right? And why this is important is if you have a situation like that where maybe someone does let their arm pop, but they still somehow manage to get out of it, you can have a, some, uh, a technique submission or a sweep or an another thing to go to afterwards so that the match, if it happens like that again, doesn't come down to the wire. So hopefully that's helpful to you, brother, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.